Hello everybody and welcome to English 1108 to Friday and welcome to the weekend. I hope everybody has some good plans. So today I'm just going to talk a little bit about revision and you know I'm going to talk about things that it's hard to put into writing. It's much easier to say them. So hopefully the people that are watching this still have revision to do and this will help you with this paper. But for those of you who are watching this and whose papers are already almost ready to go, and there are a few of you in the class, and I bet you're all watching the videos, um, I hope that this helps as you look at other papers in the future and you can take this piece of advice, this not advice, but expert knowledge, and put this to use in your world as a writer in the future. So. You know, we're, we have a lot of time here to revise the first draft into the final draft, to take it from an attempt at citations, mechanics, strong rhetoric, wonderful writing, you know, to take it as a, from an attempt to mastery. And the reason for that is that it really is a lot more complicated than it seems, and it takes a lot more, not only conscious logical analytic work, but I would say almost a subterranean intuitive understanding of writing. And you learn, and there's nothing magic about that, that understanding of writing, even if it feels intuitive or if it is, you know, I believe that you get that kind of by osmos osmosis from reading, reading, reading. Think about how often you read driving immediately comes to mind. You read all the time if you're driving. Now, if you're driving in an area you know well, you know that stop sign and you don't have to read stop. You know the street, you don't have to read it. But if you are driving, the next time you're driving somewhere where you're not totally familiar, just notice how much you need to read. So we start reading from the time we're, you know, tiny, when we first learn the alphabet, and then it, it expands into one of our primary human activities. You know, we read the grocery list label, we read our cell phones, we read our email, we read, even if you were watching videos on YouTube or, you know, living a life of screens and videos, you're reading the information about where it comes from. Yet, so all of this, our ability to do that just builds and filters in over the years. And so does our ability to understand um, and to comprehend a text. A text is anything that sends a message. A text is a billboard. Um, a text is a stop sign, an advertisement. It's something we can read and has one singular message. So how we read a text isn't something that we learn in one class, but it's accumulative of your years of reading and interpreting and understanding. So, so what you're trying to do when you revise your own writing is to look at the text, to look at the piece of writing as a thing separate from you, hugely important. Forget that you wrote it. You are looking at this with a critical objective eye and you're trying to figure out what the paper is trying to do. Not what you intended to do. Forget what you intended to do. Look at the paper and see if you can figure out what this piece of writing is saying. Because a lot of times at this level of academic writing, the, piece, the paper says it's going to do something. It's going to talk about the increasing amount of obesity in young people in the United States. That's the thesis statement. But instead, the paper offers all kinds of information about increasing obesity in Native American populations. All the examples are Native American, uh, all the personal stories, you know, the most important pieces of information. So I'll look at this and say, this is not a paper about the United States. This is a paper about Native Americans, about the American Indian population. And the writer will say, of course, you're right. I mean, that's either what I meant to say or that's the most interesting piece. So you want to forget what you were trying to do. Put that over here and see what the paper does. The most effective way to do this is to have a reader because that don't tell him or her what the paper is about, just give it to them. And they will know what the paper is doing because they won't know what the paper is supposed to do. They'll just see it as it is. And so once you figure out what the paper is trying to do, 
you don't just throw it away because this is what you intended over here and the paper is doing this. If the paper is doing something different really well, that's where your new paper starts. So you forget about what you were trying to do and you just take the new paper with what it's doing well and build from there. So I think that we have a mistaken idea of revision as correction. But revision is to rethink something, to revision it, to see it in an entirely new way, which is much, much different than correcting mistakes. And the other thing about revision, <coughs> excuse me, I have a cold, is that the only person who can really revise or see a paper is the person writing, is you. So you need to see what the paper is doing and respect that. Um, you know, I'm, I posted a video by Mark Fulmer from uh, Boston University or Boston College that's really spectacular and he shows you how to revision a paper. And that leads you to structure. So once you see the next rendition of the work, what the paper's trying to do, then you're going to take that and say, well, how is the logic here? You know, I'm going from A to Q to B to L. And you want to forget the outlines, Roman numeral 1, A, B, and C. I think that really bogs people down and confuses me, all of us. And then write down point A, you know, trend, and then point A leads us to point B. Point B, if you wrap it up, leads to point C. And just write that down. Even if it's not fitting a traditional structure, if the structure makes sense, it will work in your paper. But before you can do that, you need to know what the paper is trying to say. So most people needed to revise, I mean completely start again, or many, many people, on the level of rhetoric and structure. So hopefully this will give you an example of, of how to do that. Um, and, it, and it really means, you know, not thinking that all the work you did was for naught, you know, and it didn't matter because it did. You could not have gotten to where you are now in, in the place you are now without doing all of that work before. And now you're ready for the next draft. So if this class went longer or had a different structure, you would take that final draft and write it again. You know, no piece of writing is done forever. And one of the things that I hope to convey in this class is that writing is a skill, like knitting or surfing or skateboarding or driving, and it just gets better and better the more you practice. So if I picked up a pair of knitting needles and someone told me to knit a sweater, it would be a disaster, you know, or even adding a large column of numbers because I have no practice in those things. But um, I have a lot of practice and experience in writing. My guess is that most of you do not, at least not in the area of academic writing. So it, don't be too hard on yourself. But because you have no experience or not enough experience, <clears throat> excuse me, that means that you really have to work that you have to really put in the hours, those hours of practice, like at the piano, the violin, with the knitting, it's the same thing for writing. So you need to spend time with your paper, you need to spend time with every single sentence, a lot of time with every single sentence, time with the library database, and try to really revision your paper, see it in a whole new way, and just let go of the old. So. There's my lecture slash pep talk on revision, and I think that's it. Have a good weekend, everybody.